Hi, welcome to the double slit software demonstration. The reason for this video is because there was a lot of Patreon members that had questions about, you know, what really causes the double slit. Is it the gap between the slits or is it the slits themselves? And I'm going to show you everything matters as far as the slit goes. Now, what we have here is this is the actual part in the front that shows the slits. And then back up here, this is the screen um, that the, the energy is presented on. And let me show you the, the parameters of this. Uh, okay, here's the double slit. And we have two modes. We have a straight screen where one of the dimensions here is the screen width and the distance from the slits to the screen. This little double yellow thing over here represents what you're seeing in the bottom field. And over here, these yellow bars are what you're basically seeing in the top of the screen. We also have another variation that we're going to demonstrate with this, where it has a circular screen. Where information is plotted from minus 90 to plus 90. And the screen size is still, the slit size, the screen width still defines the, the area displayed with the slits. Okay, but instead of being in a box like it was before, now we have a spherical plane here. And the distance from the spherical, I'm not spherical, circular screen is the distance from slits to screen. So we have two modes of showing. It's very interesting the different modes of showing it. You know, one method is it's just a straight screen. Now the problem is, is that we do all the dimensions are in uh, wavelengths. Okay, and I, only, I limited the software to give 200 wavelengths for the width of the box. So it doesn't really allow us to see much over here on the screen side. But you can see the whole thing uh, with the circular screen. Because regardless of how wide the screen is, this screen out here is going from minus, 180, uh, minus 90 to plus 90 as far as azimuth goes. Okay, so that's, that's, that is the parameters that are being displayed here. So let me show you the difference. This is the, you know, this is the front of the box. This is the back of the box. And let me show you what it looks like when I put a curved screen in. You see you get much more of the field of view because now you're looking completely from left to right along the screen. <clears throat> so let's leave it uncurved right now. And let me show you what happens now. We have a controls up here to change the slit widths in wavelengths and the gap in wavelengths. Let me show you what happens when we increase the gap. Okay, as we increase the gap, you'll notice that the frequency of the fringe pattern grows. The frequency of the fringe pattern is, is predominantly the distance between the two, uh, the, two, the center of the two gaps. And here's what happens when, F, when we increase the slit width. You see it starts to darken around the edges. So the width defines the envelope around the fringe pattern. And as I increase the width, you'll see that the fringes darken toward the center. Uh, I'm sorry, they darken, they, they darken toward the outsides. But if I keep going, all of a sudden, it looks like now we have two bars. Now if we go back to the rectangular screen now, so we can see the right proportion to the front screen to the back screen, you'll see that these two bars are exactly over where the slits are. So let me go back and reduce the slit width again to go back to where we were before. Okay, so the width of the slits govern how the envelope of the fringe pattern darkens. Okay, then if I keep increasing the gap width, or, sorry, wrong way. Oops, wrong button. We still have fringe patterns. But again, the frequency of the fringe, this little tiny fringe patterns that we see here are governed by the, the, width, the distance that these two guys are apart. Okay, now, Th this fringe pattern here is in order of a couple of wavelengths. This is not something I think you're going to see with the naked eye. Unless you have a screen that magnifies it a lot. And if you put a curved screen on, you know, I mean, you should be able to see something. That, that doesn't go away. That's going to be there. That's part of the phenomenon. 
assuming that you could get perfectly coherent light through these two slits. Okay, now what I should have done, I think about it now, is I should have allowed to put incoherent light in here and see what pattern we get. I might do that, I'll give that, offer that as, uh, uh, for the Patreon membership, or I'll ask one of the Patreon engineers to do that. Okay, now what I can also do, let's go back to a non-curved screen, is I can increase the distance from the uh, slits to the screen. I'm basically, I'm, I'm extending the box. Oops, I gotta go the other way. No, nope, that was the right way. So it looks like we're magnifying it because we're pushing that screen backwards. Now I want to widen the screen. Okay, so you can play with this all you want. The, I'm going to be giving the executable out to first class passengers and above and the source code I'm going to put up to the Patreon engineers so that they can play with it and do some other things. Um, it's not hard software to write. And here's a, there's a secret in here. There, there is covered up buttons here that control another aspect of this experiment that I'm not willing to release right now. Okay, and it's a very interesting thing about a property and a nature of light that is not generally well known. Um, your Patreon engineers, uh, when you see this, you please do not disclose anything that you see here, what it does and what it means. Um, you can turn those things on by changing one of the build parameters. There's a build parameter in the called hide. If you remove that hide from the build parameters, all the things will come and it will work like I originally designed this. Okay, but that's going to be for Patreon engineers only. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm releasing this is because eventually we're building up to release a video about how, what the nature and properties of light really are. Things that are generally not known by physicists that are a little bit more well known by engineers and a couple of things I'm going to throw in there that the general engineer may not know uh, because I play with light on a daily basis um, and I do it for real. I do it for money actually. Um, I've, I've come across properties of light that are very interesting that are basically encoded in, in, in basic things. And we'll get into that. I'm not going to try to give you enough information to guess. I'm not here to try to make, help you guess anything. Okay, so this is, um, like I said, passenger, uh, first class passengers and above will get the executable of this tool so they can play with it. And the engineer and above will have the uh, source code so that they can go in and look into its deeper secrets that are not available to everyone else right now. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, I forgot to show one thing. One of the questions was, what happens if you get rid of the gap altogether? And that, that we can do that. We're going to set the gap to zero. And let's go back to a curved screen. Okay, even when the gap is zero, you can still see the very slight fringe patterns here. Matter of fact, if we increase the slit width, okay, and you might notice it might show a little gap here. That is not really there physically. That's just a bug in the drawing program because even though there's no gap, I'm still drawing two rectangles to represent the two gaps squashed together. And there might be a little bit, that's just a round off error on the size of the rectangles. It has nothing to do with the physical simulation of this. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see in the camera I'm looking and I can barely see them. Um, but right up close, let me see if I can zoom the camera in. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's very, very, very faint side lobes here going off. Very, very faint. So, um, and also the, here's the other problem is that one thing that's interesting in this, a lot of engineers will go will smile when they see this, that is you increase the width of your aperture, you'll notice that the beam width keeps getting smaller. You can, actually, you can probably see the side lobes now. And then it comes to a point where your beam doesn't get any smaller. Well, that actually, in this case, that is a problem. Let me change the distance to 1,000. That's because we're not very far out in the far field. There, now we're out in the far field. And you can kind of see the, 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 the width here. Now, if I go back and reduce the width. And 
Yeah, I can't tell if that thing is focused or not. I think you can see the side lobes. I have to double check it when I look. There is very, very faint side lobes here going off, a little ripple going off. That is, ex that is proper and expected. Okay, and again, as I narrow the aperture, and you'll see the beam width expand. And you can probably see the little side lobes better now. Let me pull back the camera. So, even with a single slit, you're going to have the ripple, the side lobes, as radar engineers would call them, going off to the side. And so, whether you have one slit or two doesn't matter. But the two slits, as you expand the gap, really make the side lobes come in and show up. And in fact, now what we're doing is we're destroying the main beam, and now we're pretty much all just, you know, this would what would be called a double slit interference pattern. Okay, so again, that, that's just a little final thing I wanted to show that you still have ripple. You're still going to have this ripple, rippling phenomenon, whether you've got one gap or two. Gee, I should have put three gaps in here and see what we get. But, hey, if the Patreon engineers want to add that in, they're welcome to do so. Uh, anyway, thank you much.